Hey guys, welcome back to FIFA 22 Arsenal Career Mode and today we'll be looking at November and we are very close to uh, December at this point looking at our Youth Academy report. You know what, as I said it before, this series is not about building a youth, um, like a re like regen or youth players, of course out of the academy, that's not really the point because right now we are filled with you know, realistic players from current generation. I've been thinking about doing a uh, Road to Glory, some sort of videos in the future after Arsenal was done. At the same time, I was thinking about doing a another series on top of Arsenal, but I feel like it is going to be a little bit hectic for me. Plus, I still have school at this point, so I might not have all the time to do um, all that kind of stuff. And of course, MLB 22, the show, it's coming up very soon in actually less than a month, actually less than a week. It co it's coming out in four days, I believe. So I'm looking forward to that. And of course, at the time, I'm uploading two different, two different series, and I'm looking forward to that as well. So first game right here, we were playing against Spartak Moscow last time out. We beat them, I believe, 2 nothing or 2-1. But again, this match is, again, very, very, uh, very important, I believe. Because we were traveling back at home. We were still looking for qualifying for the round of 16. A second game against KRC Jank. We didn't play very well. We lost that game. And, of course, a very narrow win to uh, actually open up the 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 campaign opener against Rio Sociedad and then of course beating uh, Moscow Sp Spartak Moscow last time out and today this is a must win game therefore I put a lot of uh, a f first team players or first starting eleven in this uh, in this game so we have Odegaard actually scored the first goal for us and Calvert Lewin right there just mm, his finishing it's actually subpar. I don't think he is very good at finishing at this point. He's very good at aerial aerial attack or aerial duo, but in general, I don't think he is as good as Alexander Isak right now. I favor towards more uh, more on Isak right now, despite he doesn't really or Isak doesn't really have um, a monstrous campaign so far even though he's got a lot of goals but you know what there's some some type of feelings that you have when you use a player whether if you think that they're actually very good and for me uh, certainly i feel like isak is maybe just a little bit off sometimes but in general i believe isak is much of a better forward at this time better than um Cavaluan. and speaking of four situation we have martinelli of course could have played a striker role but i decided to stick him in as a left winger and he adapts pretty well to be honest and uh martinelli scores a second goal and we quickly lost or conceded one and of course in the end Cavaluan just puts that one put the salt into the one and um Finished the game 3-1. A very convincing victory overall. And of course, uh, it's sad that we didn't get the uh, we didn't get the clean sheet. But that doesn't really matter as long as we got the win. Moving on to the second game, uh, we were playing against Swansea City, guys. Like Swansea City, it's a team full of uh, I don't even like a lot of uh, underrated players or one season wonder players used to play for Swansea City. I believe back in at least 2011, they got promoted. Nobody heard of that name before, or at least not for me. And it turns out they actually stayed up for quite a solid, maybe five, six years before going back down again. But at one point, Arsenal definitely do um, like feel threatened every time when they play Swansea City. Uh, of course, I feel like our record against Swansea City has not been good. Remember the likes of Michael Varm, um, Michu, Wilfred Bonney, and also, was it Nathan Dyer? I believe Nathan Dyer. He's, he's a right winger. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I used to play um, Nathan Dyer, the right winger. He, he was 75 rated, but his pace was 93 at that point. So, and you know what? And back in FIFA 14 Ultimate Team, I keep using him. And of course, I don't know what happened to all those players now. But Michael Vorm is still playing. He was at Spurs a couple years ago, but not now. So yeah, somebody got to do a check on them and see where they are at right now. Because back then, they were quite powerful, to be honest. Beating Arsenal in several occasions. 
but back to today's game they're not gonna beat us or at least not now we are taking two nothing lead earlier and swansea city could have got a chance back but ramsdale what a save in the end it was more of a uh, a gold line save clearance right there to keep us in the game at least and here comes a Ronaldo Sanchez finally score for us I believe that's a second goal I haven't scored one for a while for him he is of course um his role that he's playing is more of a box-to-box -box player and of course I do want him to score a lot more goals than than what we're seeing him right now because remember la last year Rabiot actually scored at least two digits in the end even though he came uh he came to arsenal in mid-season but of course we need more of a prolific player who's able to actually play in that spot and right here 75 minutes honestly this is a very very frustrating goal literally nobody's in the middle nobody intercepts it and gabriel just literally ran through his marker and allowed that goal to score or else we would have definitely keep a clean sheet but we couldn't but in the end, we ended another uh, another scoreline with three and one. Partey, Coutinho, and also Sanchez have scored. I made a little of uh, changes in that game, of course, with Odegaard being on the bench that day. I believe he didn't even come on in the end. I'll watch. He came on. But yeah, it was very... Uh, of course, Odegaard definitely do want to play more games uh, based on his contract. He's a crucial player. He is expected to play all the games, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta do some rotation in the team because you know it's it's healthy in general. So moving on to the third game of this four game episode, we are playing against uh, Leicester City, former champion, a Premier League champion back in 2015 to 2016, and right here within five minutes, Bukayo Saka could have scored the first goal, but but. Did I just I'm about to call him Kevin Schmeichel? Casper Schmeichel uh, makes a great save. 11 minutes in, and here comes our captain KT dribbling everybody and blast that one behind Schmeichel. And hopefully, Schmeichel is not going to blame anybody because KT is very powerful in that run over there. Literally went through everybody. Basically, just you know what that perfect feeling where when you have a dribbler who is good at dribbling and has to pace and you know you just kind of like uh it's like a tunnel vision just just run at one direction that's it and that's what kt did in the end and i believe that's a second goal or first goal of the season but a very memorable one as well and alexander isak score a header uh from a corner and we made that two nothing 31st minute right here here comes jamie fardy uh, and this is a very clumsy challenge by Tommy Yasu. I didn't press any tackles or whatsoever. I was just tagging the runner, but turns out, or actually, I was tagging Harvey Barnes right there. But in the end, it was a very unfortunate uh, mistimed kick right there, a notch at the back, and um, Harvey Barnes gone down right now. There, this is a penalty. Uh, Jamie Vardy just look at that penalty guys top right corner Ramsdale he has been a fantastic goalkeeper but you have no you have no idea how to save that one literally pinpoint top right corner and of course Leicester City is back in the game and I believe Jamie Vardy always have that kind of um uh like like love relationship with with Arsenal because he just scores against Arsenal every time he plays Arsenal but thank god I think this season I believe he missed the last game at home and he didn't play that's probably one of the um one of the blessing that's how probably we have that's why we want two nothing back then so yeah a free kick right there Odegaard we don't get a lot of free kicks apparently and we don't get a lot of uh a lot of a uh, dead ball or free kicks or penalty that's very weird because i feel like i get quite a lot in the last season career mode but i'm not getting that any like not getting any of that right now in this new fifa and now alexander isak scores the second goal of the game 4-1 already and of course lesser city is down by one man right there and of course at the same time i want to talk about the red card issue for FIFA 22 AI system, apparently almost, I believe, at least five to seven games in the Premier League or in the regular season where there are players getting sent off. Not us, but the AI system. And moving on to the last game 
of this uh, of, of this episode. We are currently sitting at second with nine points, only one point behind uh, KRC Jank, and of course, right now we are playing against Aria Sosida, and of course, last time out we barely beat them in the end with the last minute winner by alexander isak but today this is a very different game because we are traveling away from home this time against real sociedad and of course they have much of a bigger stake right there they're currently at three points placing a third if they beat us they would get six points and we still get nine points but the the toughest part is probably playing against krc jank in the next game since we already lost them last time out so there's no guarantee that we are uh we're gonna win that game so we gotta be a little bit careful which means we have to definitely win this game in order to qualify for round of 16 but at the same time to stay very close with krc jank because we still want to end up at first place even though right now we're at second but we still need to bring on some good players quality players we can't i can't really make a lot of rotational changes in this game like smith row is back on and also kt is back on and later on right there a few minutes after uh they equalized with a uh with with a very good team going the end 30th minute part two on the right hand side uh, dribbling across everybody basically crosses the middle of Benetta, but good save by Neto. If we somehow qualify for round of 16, Neto is definitely going to be the uh, the team of the group stage, 100% for sure. The number of times he actually keep us in the game was phenomenal, to be honest. And right there, Rabiot has been frozen by me recently because he hasn't been scoring a lot of goals. But right there, he could have probably have a chance to score. But it doesn't matter because Odegaard came back to his old club. Didn't even celebrate. Didn't even... Didn't, uh, he did celebrate. Didn't even think about respecting his own club. And he scores potentially the winning goal. And here comes Lamptey crossing the middle to Ronaldo Sanchez. But good tip over by the goalkeeper. And in the end, we beat two. We beat Rio Sociedad 2-1. A very convincing game in general. Actually, not very convincing game. It was a very crappy first half. But second half, we just kind of hang on to it. And Group F looking at right here. We uh, overtook uh, Jank right there after they tied with uh, spartak moscow and right now we have first happy about that next game or yeah next champions league game we'll be playing the uh we're playing jank to uh to find out if we are going to qualify as a first team or a second team and looking at the premier league table we are still looking very good here with 10 wins and two losses in the premier league and looking scrolling all the way down to the bottom three teams Leeds united crystal palace and swansea, swansea city are looking a little bit of trouble here um even though season is still a little bit quite early almost through halfway but they still have a chance to uh to actually make a comeback but looking at the points between the 13th place to 19th place only two points away so this is going to be a very close battle but i can't wait to see what's going to happen in future episodes so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this video like this video subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in a bit